students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having an awesome start to your week. I hope you're all healthy, happy, and taking every day in to the fullest. Welcome, Fuang. Hi, Amra. Nice to see our members. Chen, welcome to our chat moderator. Jeannie, welcome to a new member today. And welcome, Ridham, Gurpreet, and our other viewers. Nice to have you all with me today. Uh, students, we're looking at IELTS speaking part one, talking about your music. Now, as some of you know, I was away on the weekend, so we've put some extra classes in today and tomorrow so that you can keep up with your studies. Uh, students, in talking about studies, go to aehelp.com for academic IELTS. That is our website that we use for these live classes. It has all of our exams, lesson videos, strategies. Uh, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Uh, those websites power these live lessons so check them out. This is our academic IELTS website here at aehelp.com. We will use this website in a little bit to speak with some of our students. You can click this big red button there just above my head to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We're an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner and IELTS test registration center and we have helped thousands and thousands of students to uh, succeed on their IELTS exams. So become one of those success stories. Use our premium IELTS. It's worth it. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. The general IELTS website looks like this at gieltshelp.com. You can click that big red button that's just behind my head there for a one-time payment to get access to all of those materials I just mentioned. Thank you, Chen, for putting that up in the chat as well. Uh, students, you can still use this code READ9 uh, from uh, not our most recent video. We have a new video up for everybody. Uh, welcome, Carolina and Alexi, our two other chat moderators. Yes, you'll notice we have a new chat moderator with us today, Alexi. So, welcome him to the class. He's here to help people with their questions and to help keep the chat focused on the topic of English and the IELTS exam. It's great to have all of you. All right, uh, students, uh, our apps in your app stores are Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. You can download those apps, link them to your web account for integrative learning. And you can also check out Instagram. IELTS underscore A help G IELTS help for schedules, vocabulary, some fun reels that are getting quite popular these days. All right, students, if you have questions, you can ask one of our uh, moderators. So Chen, Carolina, Lexi can help you. And uh, if you don't get answers or if one of our moderators tells you so, then please email us adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Find our books on Amazon. A helps academic IELTS, G helps general IELTS. Those are uh, exam books that you can get in a carbon copy if you want like the actual book book in your hand. All right, um, students. Uh, so yeah, March 21st to the 23rd, we've got some um, some classes here for you. We've got speaking part one right now. Uh, where you will learn some strategy, some vocabulary, and then tomorrow we'll do a uh, reading at the same time. And on Thursday, we will do task two writing for subscribers. So subscribe to the channel so you can join that chat as well. Uh, and then we will have class on Friday and Saturday as well. I will put that schedule up later. So we've got classes all the way from today till the 25th. Woohoo! Lots of learning to be had. All right. Laurel, I see that you just finished your speaking exam. How did that go? I hope it went okay. Did you watch some of our videos? Did you go early? 
to your speaking test? Let us know. So pay attention to the chat, everyone. This is a speaking class. It's interactive. I'm here to talk to you. We will actually talk with students as well. You will hear them. All right. Jasmine Iconic. Thanks for being a big fan. That's great. Dahal, I hope you're doing great in Nepal. DJ Shampi, you can definitely find some speaking partners or listening partners uh, on the website as well. I will show you that. Laurel, let us know how your exam went. Hey, Laurel, maybe give us some tips. What were your exam topics? If you just sat the IELTS exam, I'm sure some students might be a little bit interested. Like, hey, what was on the exam? What kind of topics did you cover? All right, uh, students, uh, this is the video that we released a couple of weeks ago, but we have a newer one out there too. A uh, speaking video from a Vietnamese candidate who scored a band nine. Did anybody see that video? The uh, speaking video with the band nine candidate? That might be that one. Anyway, check that out. There's a video for you. Okay, everybody. Let's get to some speaking. I'm sure doing a lot of speaking. I want you to do a lot of speaking. So make sure to uh, speak and repeat. Copy what I say, copy how I say it. No, seriously, do it. Um, it's good. And even though you might feel like, well, Adrian, you're a bit too energetic for me. Guess what? On the IELTS speaking exam, you want to be energetic. If you can copy my diction, my energetic style of speaking, that is a good approach, okay? When you do psychology in university, psychology is understanding human behavior and human thinking. That's what I did. My degree is in psychology and developmental psychology. When you learn about communication, you learn very quickly that a lot of communication is nonverbal. So it's not actually your vocabulary and your grammar. And that's beyond language. So it doesn't matter if you're speaking Arabic or French or German or Punjabi Hindi um, or Swahili. Uh, it's nonverbal. Okay, nonverbal communication doesn't just mean body language, but it also means the way you use your voice, your intonation, those are all important. And if you're watching some videos online about what to do in the IELTS speaking, and if some of them are telling you that, hey, you don't need to worry about body language, eye contact, intonation, it's not true. You have to. Of course you do. We're communicators. We're not just speakers. Okay, we don't just speak a language, we communicate a language. We communicate our ideas and you need to involve your body and your spirit, not just your brain, okay? So be brave, be loud, all right? Speak and repeat. Don't just speak English with your mind but speak it with your body and soul, all right? Everybody got that? So when you're speaking, speak with your body and soul, all right. We have Domenico in here today, he'll tell you. Italians do that for sure, for the most part. All right, Lexi says yes. Okay, so get into it, really get into it. And sometimes, you know, people say, well, it's not me, I'm shy, especially when I'm speaking English. It's just a state of being. So you can change your mind. You can change the way you think about situations and the way that you present yourself. Absolutely. Uh, we can be trained, we can be programmed, just like a computer. So if you change your attitude, it will become you, okay? But you have to change your attitude, all right? Okay, there's Domenico. Exactly, CR7 says just focus on yourself and not the examiner, focus on what you're saying. Okay, so you go to your IELTS speaking and um, you go early, you go about an hour early, you talk to some other people, okay? So you talk to other candidates, 
If you can't find candidates, talk to the store clerk where you bought your chocolate bar before your test, okay? But use English, all right? So talk in English. Maybe have a friend or a family member who you can speak with uh, before your test, okay? So it's a really good idea. And then uh, you go into the exam now, you register 20 minutes early, you have to empty your pockets, you cannot take anything with you to the exam except a bottle of water, a pen, pencil, eraser, and that's it, okay? So um, you register 20 minutes early, you go into your test. Now, remember, from the very beginning, okay, from the start, speak in full sentences, okay? You must show your best English. Not your casual English, but your best English, okay? All right, so when you go into the room, um, then the examiner might say something like, um, please have a seat, okay? And then you can say, thanks. Happy to be here. And smile. Remind yourself. This isn't supposed to be torture. Okay? So maybe throw in a little smile. All right? There. Little smiley face. Okay? So please have a seat. Thanks. Happy to be here. Are you smiling? Are you repeating me? You should be. Okay, we want to do repetition in this class. So, thanks, happy to be here. <laughs> and even if you force the smile, it's okay. It will break the tension, okay? So even it, when, I should say when because I want you to force this smile. Even when you force your smile, it is good. It will help you to be confident, okay? So we can become that smile, all right? <clears throat> Here we go, students. Now, the examiner will ask you for your identification, okay? Uh, by the way, students, when you check in 20 minutes before and you have your passport, so that's the last object that you will have with you is your passport or your ID card, don't just carry it around in your hand. Put it in your pocket. Put it in a safe place. I have heard of students putting their passport or their card down during that 20 minutes and then losing it. So that's not good. And they won't let you sit the exam with that, okay, when you're doing the face-to-face. -face. So don't lose it. Put it in your pocket. All right. And then the examiner will say, may I see your identification? That is the first question that the examiner will ask you. All right, Alexi is leading the charge. Take a look at our chat moderator there. Uh, Alexi says, you can answer this question in this way. Yeah, for sure. Uh, here's my passport that I have used to schedule the exam. Now, that's okay, but here, students, what's the mistake that Alexi is making? So what should you do differently? So when the examiner says, may I see your identification? It's a nice full sentence but I would approach this differently, and I did. When I sat the IELTS exam, and I've done it before, I was a little bit different on this answer. Um, so yeah, for sure, here's my passport that I've used to schedule the exam. What would I do differently? Okay, so this isn't bad, and Alexi can still get a band nine, but it's not the perfect start. Um, for the perfect start, what should I say? Um, hey says, sure, here you go. Yeah. So this is also another example of what you shouldn't really do. So hey, this, um, this answer here is not ideal. It's not perfect. Okay. So hey says, yeah, sh uh, or he says, sure, here you go. Okay. Muhammad says this. This is a bit better. Okay. Muhammad says, 
Yes, of course, here's my passport that I have used to register. This is a little bit of a better answer. You want to use these first few questions to remind you that you are in a professional communication, okay? So students, use these first few questions to remind yourself that you are in a professional conversation, okay? So when Alexi says, yeah, for sure, here's my passport that I've used to schedule the exam, it kind of feels like Alexi is talking to their buddy, their pal. The examiner's not your pal. They're a stranger. They're a professional. They're not your boss, but they are a professional, okay? And for a customs officer too, when you're traveling, yeah, for sure is maybe not the best way um, to present your passport, especially if you forgot a slice of pizza in your backpack like I did. Okay, I don't like to see food going across borders. <laughs> but anyway, so um, <clears throat> I would answer this a little bit differently, okay? So, Alexi, I would answer this like this. Yes, gladly, okay? So instead of starting in such a colloquial way, I would say, yes, gladly. Here is my passport that I have used to schedule this exam. That's better. Okay, this I wouldn't use. It's too colloquial. When you don't know this person, it's too casual. Okay, um, sure, here you go is way too casual. Okay, way too casual. The examiner's not your buddy. This is out of context. Um, if I have, if I'm sitting with my good friend and I say, hey, can I borrow your a pen? And my friend goes, yeah, sure, here you go. That's fine. That's my friend. It's my buddy. But not with a person you don't know. Okay, it's out of context, all right? So, yes, of course, here's my passport that I have used to register. Much more professional. Or uh, you could also say certainly. Here is my ID card that I have used to register. Uh, please take a look. Okay, it's really important that you show professional language and attitude with full sentences from the beginning. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up, everybody, if that made sense for you, because it is really important. You set the tone, you set the mood, you create the atmosphere for the next 12 minutes with that first sentence. Okay, is that clear, everybody? So you need to create the right atmosphere, the right context okay all right I see lots of thumbs up going up okay Shakna Zoa says your pronunciation is good enough I'm not sure what you mean I'm speaking with Canadian West Coast accent so I hope so I hope my pronunciation is good um, Chen yes okay good of course nice all right so set the mood by the way uh, those of you focusing on pronunciation Pronunciation is not that important. Uh, if you watched uh, the uh, lesson uh, with uh, the former examiner, Adam, last week, you heard him talk about this too. Pronunciation, as long as the examiner understands you, not too important. The only time it's a problem is if the examiner does not understand what you are saying, okay? All right, uh, so after the question of your passport, the examiner will ask for your name. What is your full name? Okay, so uh, give me a full sentence for what is your full name, okay? Badminton Guru says, Sir, can you try a British accent? I can, Badminton Guru, but there are lots of different accents in the UK as well. Even within London, there are lots of different uh, English accents. Keep that in mind, okay? Okay, Selena says this. So, Selena says, my first name is Sunny and my last name is Bongjan. Please just call me by my first name, Sunny. Perfect. Okay, that's a great answer. It's clear, it's professional, it's the way you would present yourself in an academic, professional setting to a stranger. My first name is Sunny. And my last name is Bomjan. Please just call me by my first name, 
Sunny. Okay, watch my intonation there too, how I emphasize. Please just call me Sunny. Okay, I emphasize my name, right? Okay, uh, Domenico says this. My given name is Domenico and my family name is LaFauci. Please refer to me as Dominic. Okay, that makes sense. That's perfect. Excellent. Good job. Okay, those are good ways uh, to present yourself. Okay, now a very common question here is, do you work or study? So at this point, the examiner will say, for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Do you work or study? This is a very common question. Make sure that you practice answering the question about what you do in life currently in the past or in what you plan to do in the future even. Okay, so do you work or study is a very, very common question. Um, so this is how I would answer it. I am both employed as a uh, cashier uh, in a supermarket and I am attending uh, my local college to get a degree in computer uh, science. Okay. Notice the use of correlative conjunctions, both and, okay? This is correlative conjunctions. I told you about this last week, okay? So here's a tip, everybody. Uh, learn and use correlative uh, conjunctions during your IELTS speaking. I still don't hear it enough. I keep telling people, use correlative, use correlative. But when I test people and when I uh, do practice with people, I don't hear those enough. So use correlative conjunctions during your IELTS speaking to boost your scores. They're very effective in doing that because they emphasize information and they show a better level of communication, okay? So correlative conjunctions, if you don't know what that is, check it out, okay? So I am both employed as a cashier in a supermarket and I'm attending my local college to get a degree in computer science, okay? All right, um, Abduvali says this. I am a sophomore at university. My faculty is foreign philology. Okay, sounds interesting. All right. Um, I would finish, so if the examiner is asking me about work and school, Abduvali, I would probably finish it like this, but I am not employed at the moment. Okay, so just make that clear, right? So clearly you're studying, but do you have a job? Yes, no, if not, let him know. So I'm a sophomore at university, my faculty is uh, foreign uh, philology, uh, but I'm not employed at the moment okay all right Artie says I do both study and work I'm working as an HR uh, executive in a private organization moreover I am doing uh, MBA in HR specialization uh, from Chandigarh University, okay? Uh, you don't need, Arti, you don't need masters because MBA means Masters in Business Administration. Okay? So you don't need to say MBA masters, that's weird English because then you're saying masters, masters, okay? So you don't need to say that. So just masters, in HR, HR is human resources, of course, specialization. You don't need to say stream, it's over speaking, okay? And um, whenever you use an acronym like HR, even though the H is a consonant, it still takes the uh, article N, 
Okay, not a HR. It's an HR. It's a weird exception in English with acronyms. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, what do you like to do when you are not working or studying? Give me a nice full sentence answer for that one. Alexander says, I do not work uh, and do not study. This is for the previous one. While I'm waiting for some answers, Alexander, I'm going to uh, give you a bit of a correction here. Okay, this is for the last question. Um, it's a good one because I think a lot of students make this mistake. So Alexander says, I do not work and do not study at the moment. Um, Alexander, correct English here is I neither work nor study it's way more concise and way better english okay so take out the do not and take out all of this and do not okay so alexander it's i neither work nor study at the moment except uh getting prepared uh, for ielts except preparing for ielts okay concise language students get high band scores preparing for IELTS. So when you get into those high band scores like seven, eight, nine, it's not just what you say, but it's how you say it. Keep that in mind, everybody. And I know that many of you who have already done the IELTS are familiar with this and you're like, yeah, I learned that. Okay. So for keep this in mind, this is an important tip. Okay. For bands seven to nine, it is not so much about what you say because it has to be good you have to be on topic uh, but about how you say it okay so using good language all right okay Okay, so looking back at the current question, uh, what do you like to do when you are not working or studying? CR7 says, To be honest, when I have uh, no homework from university, at that time I am busy with my younger brother playing football because it's my favorite sport. Okay. Um, to be honest here, CR7 is unnecessary, it's awkward. So only use this when it's correct, okay? Don't use the expression to be honest when it's not necessary. Why are you honestly talking about what you do in your free time? That's just strange, okay? There's nothing awkward there, nothing strange there, okay? All right? So I'll give you an example of using to be honest correctly. It's like um, if somebody asks me, um, what do you uh, think about... Um, giving uh, children a lot of candy and then I would say something like to be honest I eat a lot of candy so I think it's okay right it's where I'm admitting something okay so that's where I'm admitting that I eat a lot of candy as well but here admitting that you play football when you're not studying or working that's strange you don't need to admit that that's just it just is okay so that's how you use to be honest okay use to be honest when you admit a surprising fact or piece of information otherwise it is strange to say to be honest and the examiner may feel that you are using memorized phrases and this will decrease your speaking score. 
Does that make sense, everybody? So does it make sense that you can't just randomly use expressions, phrases, idioms? If you do that, your score will go down, guarantee you, okay? On the marking sheet that you have available online, there's a PDF from British Council and IDP, the IELTS official marking sheet, it says, uses idiomatic language and expressions correctly in context, not out of context. Out of context, marks go down, okay? Everybody got it? So CR7, you are not. You don't have to be honest when you're telling me what you do in your free time unless it's something strange, right? Like, to be honest, when I have free time, I just eat chocolate until I pass out. Then it's like, whoa, did you just tell me that, right? Um, so then it's kind of strange, but going to play football, that's not strange, right? So when I have um, <clears throat> no homework, not no any, and always write out the whole phrase, okay? Don't expect me to guess it, okay? When I have no homework from university, comma, at that time, I am busy with my younger brother playing football because it's my favorite sport. I uh, played for a couple of hours yesterday, okay? Use that quantitative language, numbers, 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 okay? All right, um, so <clears throat> part one, uh, let's get into it. Let's talk about music. So in many cases, the examiner will introduce a topic like music. They'll say, let's talk about music. Um, and then they'll say, what is your favorite kind of music? Okay, they'll start you off nice and smooth with a question that most people, even if you have lower level English, should be able to answer. What is your favorite kind of music? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Nice full sentence answer for this one. <clears throat> okay. Alauna says, I prefer jazz songs because it reminds me of my father. Okay. So, Alaunus, it's a good start, but until here, it's only a band five, especially because there's not a lot of fluency. Okay, so allowness, the way that we would answer this more accurately is I prefer jazz, not jazz songs, jazz. Jazz is a style of music, it's not really a song style, okay? So I prefer jazz because it reminds me of my father who uh, passed away a few years ago. I miss him very much and listening to some jazz piano brings back fond memories. Okay, that would be your band nine. All right, so, and this is what I'm guessing from what you said that maybe he's no longer around, okay? So until this point, I prefer jazz because it reminds me of my father. It's a band five, okay? Especially if you say, I prefer jazz songs. So here it's, I prefer jazz because it reminds me of my father who passed away a few years ago. I miss him very much and listening to some jazz piano brings back fond memories. Now you have a band nine. Uh, you have to use good adjectives and adverbs, students. Uh, fond memories is a great uh, collocation. So uh, remember these, write these down, okay? Fond memories are memories that you really like. They're good memories, okay? So fond memories equals good memories that make you feel full of love, okay? So check that out, all right? Fond memories, okay? All right, uh, let's see. K 
Kevin Bowie says, In my eyes, rock music beats the rest because I just love its loud and relentless tunes which make me pumped. I blasted some rock music from my speakers this morning to boost my mood before the exam. Okay, this would be about a band um, 7.5. It's okay, but it's slightly unnatural. Okay, so uh, good vocabulary content, but somewhat awkward. Okay, so Kevin, um, when you're talking about music, we hear music, we don't see music so much, right? So uh, believe it or not, at some point when your English is masterful, then you will even make that kind of a distinction, not to use an expression like in my eyes, when you're talking about uh, sensory um, information that you don't actually see but you hear, okay? Like when people are writing an essay and they write what I'm saying is, uh, what I'm writing is, or what I'm stating is. You're not actually saying it, you're writing it, right? So you have to use correct expressions. Um, so here, I would just simply say something like this, Kevin. I love rock uh, music. It's better than the rest because it is loud and relentless. Okay, it gets me pumped. I blasted uh, rock um, all morning to uh, boost my self-esteem um, before this exam, okay? That would be uh, the better way uh, to say that. That would be the band nine way, okay, Kevin? So I love rock music. It's better than the rest because it is loud and relentless. It gets me pumped. I blasted rock all morning to boost my self-esteem before this exam. Same information, more concise, more accurate natural English, okay? So for that band seven to nine, it's okay. It's a good idea to use all those expressions and vocabulary, but you have to use it well. Okay. All right. Um, let's jump a few questions here to these last couple because I'm going to uh, get some volunteers here in a bit, and I want to look at these more <clears throat> complex uh, questions. So let's look at this one, everybody. Has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years? Uh, give me a nice full sentence answer for that one. Really pay attention to the grammar. Has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years? Give me a nice full sentence for this one. I will do the same. <clears throat> Yes, it definitely has. <clears throat> a few years back, I was really into electronic music, but these days I have been listening a lot more to instrumental um, genres like uh, classic rock and even um, smooth piano. I have been listening a ton um, to uh, Guns and uh, Roses. Okay, sure. All right. So here's my answer. Now notice that this question is present perfect. You have to catch that, okay? And as soon as you catch that it's present perfect, you reflect it, okay? So very important tip. You must reflect the uh, grammar of questions to get high band scores, okay? Super important, all right? 
So has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years? Okay, speak and repeat, everybody. Copy what I say, copy how I say it. So has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years? Yes, it definitely has. Boom, right away, showing present perfect. A few years back, I was really into electronic music, but these days I have been listening a lot more to instrumental genres like classical rock and even smooth piano. I've been listening a ton to Guns and Roses. Uh, that's what I listen to. And if we stay with Kevin Bowie's question, I can even say that's what I listened to this morning to get me jacked. That's what I listened to before this exam to get me excited. Okay. All right. Uh, Vivek, you cannot request a reading passage because we can only use our materials for teaching you uh, reading and listening, right? Um, we can't just use uh, other uh, exams from other creators. That's not allowed, okay? All right, um, let's take a look. Anime Holic says this. Obviously, it has changed me since my childhood, as at those time, rock music was quite popular and I was a big fan of Metallica, but now it has changed dramatically and most of the people are into modern rap. Okay, this would be a band five to six. Why? So what are the mistakes? It's important to know what mistakes you're making, okay? So here, <clears throat> why would I say that uh, anim <clears throat> Anime Holic's answer is kind of a band five to six? So obviously it has changed since my childhood as at those time rock music was quite popular and I was a big fan of Metallica, but now it has changed dramatically and most of the people are into modern rap. What's, what's the biggest mistake with this answer? Anime Holic, what do you think? Yeah, very good. So Anime Holic, um, look at the chat. So before you think, oh, Adrian's just telling me this, you, you can see people in the chat saying the same. So Amra says, it's not a personal response. Okay. Uh, Fuang says, it's off topic. Alexi says, off topic. Uh, Mal says, saying obviously is awkward. Yeah, agreed. So first of all, it's off topic. Uh, the question is about you, not about people. Okay, so this kind of this answer indicates to the examiner that maybe you didn't um, understand the question. In fact, what will often happen here is the examiner will re-ask the question. And so the examiner will say, has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years? And then Anime Holic, if you say, Obviously, it has changed since my childhood as those times rock music was quite popular and most people are into modern rap. Before you even finish, the examiner will go, has your choice changed in music in the last 10 years? Okay, be very careful about that. If the examiner repeats the question, especially if they emphasize a part of the question like has your choice, then you have to go, oh, my bad, okay? So uh, if you realize that, Anime Holic, this is what you can do. Oh, uh, I see. I'm a bit nervous and I didn't get you the first time. And then you can say yes, my choice of music has also changed. I used to listen to uh, Metallica and other uh, rock music, but now uh, I'm into um, rap music. Okay? So you can correct it. You can, it, the nice part about speaking that you don't have in the writing, listening, reading sections is that you can reclaim marks.
okay? Pay attention to that, all right? This is an important tip, everybody. And we haven't actually spoken about this in the past, but it's true, okay? So um, the nice part about the speaking section, even though it's fast, is that you can reclaim marks, okay? So in the speaking, section you can get back your marks as long as you recognize your mistakes and make appropriate corrections you must stay calm to do this okay obviously you can't do this in the other sections well, you can a little bit, um, but I won't talk too much about that. So in the listening, you can make corrections at the end when you're transferring your answers to the answer sheet or in the writing, you can review your work and catch some mistakes as well. But in the speaking section, you can get back your marks as long as you recognize mistakes. Now, don't overcorrect yourself and don't correct when you have correct English, so be careful, okay? But when you realize, like, oh, that question was about me, not about people, um, then you can say, oh, my bad, I'm a bit nervous, I thought you asked me about people in general, but now I see you're asking about me. Um, yes, my music preferences have also changed in the last decade. Uh, I'm a lot more into rap music myself as where I used to be into uh, rock music in the past, right? So you can make those corrections. So your mark can go like this. Like if you have like, uh, let's say a band um, uh, six and then you have a band uh, seven and then you have a band six and then you have a band eight. So question by question, your mark in the speaking can kind of go like that, okay? So it can move up and down a bit. And then of course, at the very, very end, uh, the examiner will think about all of what you've said and they'll say, okay, that was a 7.5, all right? So what you want to do is you want to constantly be aiming for that higher level band score, okay? All right. Does that make sense, everybody? Like what I just said there, okay? So you're always, in the speaking, you're always fighting to get those higher band scores. Does that does that make sense? Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I see a lot of thumbs up, so that's good. Okay. All right. Let's do this last tricky question together. Um, here we go. This is a fun one. If you could learn to play an instrument, what would it be? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So if you could learn to play an instrument, what would it be? Okay, this is what Amra says. Amra says, um, given the chance, to play a musical instrument, I would probably master the guitar since I practiced it a bit when I was a child in my local music school and I really enjoy the sound of it. I love it, okay? So Amra's answer here is a band nine. That's a great example of a band nine response. So if you could learn, right? Uh, given the chance to learn. And here she um, paraphrases with master Okay, a musical instrument. I would probably master the guitar. Very nice direct answer. Since I practiced it a bit when I was a child. Okay, very nice explanation. In my local music school and I really enjoy the sound of it. It's great. Okay, it works. You don't always have to have a very long answer. Uh, Amra's answer has enough detail, enough unique vocabulary, grammar. If you answer like that, that can be easily rated a band nine. Jesse has this answer for us. Definitely it's the ukulele, or as some pronounce it, ukulele. 
Um, so if you pronounce it as ukulele, fine. If you pronounce it as ukulele, fine. Examiners are experts. They will understand both as long as it's one of the correct pronunciations, okay? So ukulele is like a tiny little classical guitar with four strings. So uh, definitely it's the ukulele simply because I have bought it a few years ago after I watched the Coco movie, but I have had many things in my plate, so I haven't been serious to practicing it even once. Okay, that's a band five. It's got a lot of mistakes, Jesse, but we'll correct it. So, um, given that I have enough time, it sounds like you have an issue with time. So make the conditional about time, Jesse. Given that I have enough time, definitely it's the ukulele, simply because I have bought it a few years ago after I watched the Coco movie, but, one sentence, but I have had many responsibilities. Don't use the word things, everybody. Not in my plate, what's the correct expression? It's not in my plate, because it's not in your plate. Okay, what's the correct English here? If you make mistakes with idioms, the examiner will catch it right away. They'll be like, Meh, what? So, yeah, that's right, Bogdan. It's on my plate. Okay, right, Alexi, on my plate. Ex exactly, Dylan, on my plate. So I've had many responsibilities on my plate, so I haven't been um, practicing. I haven't practiced because it's just one. You can't use continuous when it's one. When it's one, it's just one. It's not continuous. So I haven't practiced with it even once. Okay, now, Jesse, you we've upscaled you from a band five to a band nine. Okay, Jesse, so this is how it reads. Given that I have enough time, definitely it's the ukulele, simply because I have bought it a few years ago after I watched the Coco movie, but I haven't had many, so, but I have had many responsibilities on my plate, so I haven't been, uh, I haven't practiced with it even once. There, now, it's correct, okay? All right, so, pay attention there. Okay, everybody, that's looking good. Um, so... Now we can uh, now we can take some volunteers to practice these questions. All right, okay. So uh, to volunteer for speaking, everybody, follow the instructions that our moderators will put into the chat for you. The first step, of course, is to go to the website. Now, before you freak out, you can do this for free. Okay, you do not have to pay. A penny to do this all right this is absolutely part of our free version of the course but if you get the paid version yeah of course you're going to uh, get lots of other benefits right so but you can do this for free uh, go to aehelp.com okay that's your first step Chen has already kindly put the instructions into the chat maybe Carolina or Alexi can put it into the chat in a moment again as well sometimes students don't catch it the first time uh, go to the website, join the premium version of our IELTS course by clicking the big red button that's just above my head there, okay? That's a one-time payment, lifetime access. Uh, when you click that, fill out the form, and you're off to the races. General IELTS students, gieltshelp.com, do the same, okay? So, boom, there it is, fill it out, and you're good. Uh, you can try it for free with the green button, okay? Uh, so there it is and with the green button you can try it for free okay all right um, then when you are in your my student account you will see your computer-based practice exams you will see your full online interactive course with all these strategies this is of course for premium students you will be able to download the books in digital format and PDFs with study plans you can get all of our videos over 100 hours for all of the sections, but that's 
for the premium students. However, for everybody, you can use the student partner speaking, which is right there. Okay, it might look a little different on your mobile phones. You click on that, you accept that you're responsible for your speaking, and then you get into the chat interface and you'll see people uh, joining in. So we have uh, Oan, we have Chayani, Fuang, Alexander, Rohan, Janat, Thu, Amra, and lots, lots more. Okay, some of them are premium uh, students, some of them are free students, some of them are members. Um, what's important is that you volunteer and you can volunteer by clicking that blue button next to my handle which is master so you see me there as master click on the blue little envelope by my name and send me a message okay we haven't spoken to Amra in a while and Amra's had some good answers here so let's see if we can start off with Amra Amra are you ready okay then you send me a message I will message you back to make sure we can make a, a connection and then we'll start if you're having troubles refresh the page okay try it with somebody else first Hi Amra. Hello. Hi Amra. Hi sir. How are you? I am doing fantastic sir. What about you? I'm doing great. Thank you Amra. I haven't heard your voice in a long time. Uh, it was because of my hybrid schedules uh, and because of uh, university subjects and exams. I see. And now you have a little bit of a break? Yes, and because and I set a goal to pass uh, my IELTS exam after three months, so I will frequently attend your classes. Awesome, Amra. That's great. I'm happy to hear it. Um, okay, Amra, can you just remind everybody why you are taking the IELTS, so what your ultimate goal is? Uh, the reason why I'm taking an IELTS exam is to pursue master's degree in uh, mayor accounting abroad. Uh, one of the three countries, uh, UK, uh, Germany, or uh, Hungary. Okay, yes, I remember that now. Um, all right. Okay, Amra, um, I will ask you a few questions from today's uh, practice questions. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Uh, welcome to the speaking uh, section of the IELTS exam. Uh, my name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. Uh, to begin with, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a, a general topic. Uh, may I see your identification? Yes, of course. Here's my passport that I had used to register for this exam a couple of weeks ago. Please take a look. What is your full name? Uh, my first name is Amra, and my uh, family name is Abbasov. Please just call me by my first name. Okay, um, and do you work or study? Uh, I both uh, work and study. I'm a junior uh, student in, who pursues a, a bachelor's degree in mayor accounting. Uh, at the university, and uh, I work as an, a part-time uh, auditor, uh, one of the consulting companies. What do you like to do when you're not working or studying? Uh, whenever I have some me time, uh, I'm a big fan of going swimming, uh, since it's a very good way for me to stay strong and fit and also uh, reduce uh, stress after a long week of heavy schedules. Let's talk about music. What is your favorite kind of music? Um, my favorite genre of music is uh, electronic uh, as it helps me to uh, develop the um, willpower to keep moving and get focused and uh, last evening I put on my favorite uh, track uh, Spirit to gain confidence on this exam. 
Okay, we'll stop there. That was good. Okay, um, so that would be about a band um, 775. Uh, Amra, uh, so far, which is good. Okay, you're uh, remembering a lot of the key strategies. A couple of slight corrections uh, that will help you to boost your score. Your First of all, your content is quite good. So you're remembering um, to answer, explain, give examples. You're remembering to use complex sentences, which is really good. A um, couple of points. Uh, practice to speak faster and I think that's what you said like I'm going to really concentrate here so you want to work on improving your fluency 10% faster smoother um, will help you to improve your fluency score when you find yourself starting most of your answers maybe all of your answers with um natural fillers are okay but you don't want to start every answer with um Okay, then it starts to get a little bit awkward. So work on using different fillers or just uh, avoiding that um, at the beginning of every response, okay? And then my third and final tip, Amra, is uh, to just pay attention to natural English, especially at the beginning. So firstly, when I asked you, may I see your identification? You had a really good answer there. Then when I asked for your name, that was perfect. No problems there. When I asked you, do you work or study? You said, uh, I both work and study, which is okay. And then you said, I'm a junior student who pursues a degree. It's kind of awkward we generally don't use who to refer to ourselves in a response okay um, so here it would be better to say I'm a junior student and I'm pursuing a degree in accounting okay so just repeat after me um, I both work and study currently I'm a junior at university and I'm pursuing a degree in accounting uh, uh, currently, uh, I do both uh, work and study. I'm a junior student at a uh, university and I'm pursuing a bachelor's degree in mere accounting. Okay, much better. And you started to speed up near the end. That's the speed you want to reach from beginning to end. So one more time, and repetition is not just for Amra, it's for everybody, okay? So don't just copy what I'm saying, but also copy my speed. Here it's a shorter response, so try to be as fast as I am, okay? I both work and study. I'm a junior at university, and I'm pursuing a degree in accounting. One more time, Amra. Uh, I do both. Uh, I do both work and study. Uh, I'm a junior student at university, and I'm pursuing a bachelor's degree in mere accounting. Nice. Okay, that was much better. So now you're nearing that band eight, band nine level. You can feel it, right? Like it's a smooth string of yeah. words and sentences, right, Amra? Yes. Okay. So Amra, great. Good time to get into it. Keep coming back. I'll be looking for you over the days and weeks, all right, to help you uh, reach your goals. And happy to yeah. hear your voice sure. again. Have an awesome uh, rest of your day. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. Thanks. Bye, Amra. All right. That was Amra, everybody. Uh, let's give him a thumbs up. It's uh, super important to uh, support each other and to give each other confidence. Amra did really well there, and uh, hopefully everybody else uh, was also repeating those sentences. Uh, let's take another uh, volunteer here. Uh, Bogdan is uh, one of our um, regular members. I'm also taking a few people from the bottom here just so that, you know, you don't think that if you're not at the top, you can't volunteer. Here we go. Bogdan, are you ready? And new students, I strongly encourage you to volunteer. So I'm also looking for some new uh, names as well. Bogdan, if you're there, uh, let me know and then I will reach out to you. Hello. Hi, Bogdan. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. Anything exciting on the weekend, Bogdan? Um, I guess uh, I passed all of my exams at the part-time department and 
now I have uh, a lot of time to focus exclusively on preparing for IELTS and I'm really happy about that. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on passing uh, those exams. That's always a positive uh, feeling for sure to be yeah. rewarded for all that hard work, right? So that's great. Of course. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit about music. Are you ready? Of course, yeah. Here we go, Bogdan. What is your favorite kind of music? My favorite type of music is rock because I like the energy and the rhythm of the genre. Today in the morning before sitting this exam, I listened to Back in Black by ECDC and I felt really energetic after that. What do you use to listen to music? Well, most of the time I stream music from Spotify using my iPhone and AirPods Pro because it's really convenient and I can do it on the go while commuting to my university. How often do you listen to music? I listen to music every single day because I just can go out without uh, having something playing. Uh, because it helps me to uh, focus uh, or just to kill some time. And yesterday, uh, while commuting to my university by bus, I listened to rock playlist uh, from Spotify and it helped me to uh, um, spend some time with pleasure. Where do you usually listen to music? Besides being on the bus, I usually listen to music in the confines of my room because uh, it's really quiet and I really like to put some music on after a long day of studying and uh, yesterday after studying for five hours uh, I uh, listened to music while lying on my couch and it was really cozy. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. That was really good, Bogdan. You've been practicing. Good for you. Okay. Um, yeah. First of all, wonderful use of uh, vocabulary. I loved it. You used some nice high-level words, some great collocations. Uh, I hope uh, people were catching some of those. That's great. Learn from each other. Peer learning is very, very effective. That's why I always say these uh, that uh, this uh, chat function that we're using right now, it's not just for these live classes. It's for everybody to talk to everybody else, okay? Yeah. So even without these live classes, it's always available. Um, okay, so Bogdan, uh, let's jump back and I will give you a, a band score estimate. So I would say that was a band um, eight to nine. For sure. Mm -hmm. It's really tricky. It depends, like as we talked with Adam last week, it depends on your examiner. It depends on a lot of factors, whether you get 8, 8.5 or 9, because it's so tight on those marks and who's looking for what mistakes or what types mm -hmm. of uh, language. But you did a great job of giving answers, explanations and examples uh, reflecting the question. So that was really good. Let me just go back here and look at your answers. So. Um, what is your favorite kind of music? You said my favorite type of music is rock because I like the energy. Then you gave an awesome example of ACDC. I love ACDC. So I want to give you a nine. And sometimes, <laughs> okay. you know what? If you can um, create empathy with your listener at the band eight, mm -hmm. nine level, it matters. It does. So yeah. um, pay attention to, you know, what your examiner or who your examiner is, uh, what they're wearing. Um, and you might be able to, you know, if you notice that they have an ACDC shirt, <laughs> and you can say, I listen to ACDC, they won't have an ACDC shirt. But, um, okay, okay, one tip, Bogdan, one important tip for you, okay? And this is an important tip for everybody, especially when you have this level of English vocabulary and grammar. Make sure, Bogdan, to have a nice loud voice from start to finish, okay? Mm -hmm. When you're speaking, what happens is you start with a very energetic voice, but then the last three, four words of your answer, you really deflect. You become very soft at the end, okay? And mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, so this is what I like doing. And I'm like, 
why aren't you finishing as strong as you started? So f start strong, finish strong with your voice. Okay. Okay, are you following me on yeah. this? Yeah? Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, so it's important to do that, okay? You want to mm -hmm. end with a strong impression of what you're saying as well. You don't want to soften it too much. I know it's a style of speaking and it's a polite style of speaking not to be really aggressive with your voice, but on the IELTS, especially because they're recording you. And sometimes when you have this 8-9 level, maybe they don't know what to mm -hmm. give you. So the examiner will ask another examiner to listen and say, hey, is this an 8 or an 8.5 or a 9? What do you think? We'll take the middle of the two. If you have this very soft voice at the end and then in the recording, the second examiner can't hear what you're saying, then they'll say, oh, just mm -hmm. give them an 8. I can't really hear what they're saying at the end, right? So yeah. does that make sense, Bogdan? Of course it does. Yeah. yeah? Okay. So strong voice until the end. Um what do you use to listen to music? I love how you answered both hardware and software. Okay, uh, try this one one more time, Bogdan. I'm going to ask you the same question. Give me the same answer, but with a strong voice from beginning to end. Okay, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, what do you use to listen to music? Most of the time, I stream music from Spotify using my iPhone and AirPods Pro because it's really convenient and I can do it on the go while commuting to my university. Yeah, while commuting to university, right? So even stronger, while commuting to mm -hmm. university, right? So while commuting to university. Better, okay? So you, yeah. you don't have to shout it, right? It's not an exclamation mark, but it's a strong period mm -hmm. rather than a soft period, okay? All right, so make sure to practice that over the next few days, okay, Bogdan? Of course, yeah. All okay, right. Thank you. You're very welcome. Bye for now, Bogdan. Goodbye. Have a nice day. All right, let's give Bogdan a thumbs up. That was great, right? Some really nice vocabulary. Um, even the last answer there, where? So besides the bus, making the connection with the previous answer. I listen to music in the confines of my room. Confines means in the private space of my room. Confines of my room. Okay, um, any new volunteers here? I'm looking for some new names. We had a new one there a moment ago. So if we have some new volunteers, I'd love to hear some fresh voices. We want to encourage everybody to practice their English. And of course, by that, we want to encourage you to not be shy, right? We don't want you to be shy. Okay, um, we haven't heard from Juan Pablo in quite some time. Let's see if we can reach out to Juan. Juan, are you there? It's nice to see some of our students coming back that we haven't heard from in a while, like Amra and Juan. That's also great, for sure. Okay. Hello? Hi, Juan. How are you? I am doing superb. How are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. uh, Juan, can you just tell everybody where you are and why you're taking IELTS or studying for IELTS? Because I think a lot of people have not heard you since we haven't heard from you in a while. Sure. Uh, yes, I'm from Argentina. I live in a small city called General Roca uh, in the Patagonia region. And I'm studying for the, for the IELTS because uh, I think it's going to help me improve my English in general. I don't have a specific, I mean, I, I don't have a schedule, the, the exam yet, but I like to take it in the future. Okay, Juan, that's great. Yeah, um, and there are more and more people who take the IELTS uh, simply to improve their English and, of course, improve your communication. Because as you know, Juan, IELTS is not just English, but it's um, also mastering a way of thinking and communicating, right? Yeah, especially for speaking and writing. Yeah, but I mean, even reading and listening, like how you comprehend information and follow information, there's just a lot of great strategies to learn there. And I agree with you, writing mm -hmm. and, and speaking especially. Okay, uh, Juan, let me ask you a few questions about music. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, okay, here we go. Um, how often do you listen to music? I usually listen to music every day, especially during the afternoon 
uh, when I go for a walk on, or an exercise. Yesterday, for example, I've been listening to my favorite tracks on my phone uh, for an hour. Where do you usually listen to music? I often listen to music uh, at my house when I do some chores. And I also listen to music when I go for walks at the park and in my city downtown. Has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years? I think it has. Um, in the last decade, it has changed a lot. Um, when I was younger, I used to listen to a lot of electronic music, mostly. And now I'm much more open to suggestion, even from uh, YouTube Music, which is the app I used to listen to music. And I used and these weeks I've been listening to music from the 60s which I think is pretty relaxing and I also listen to indie music if you um, could learn to play an instrument what would it be um, if I ever had a chance to learn to play a new instrument I think it would be the violin when I was younger, I used to play the guitar, but I never was really good at it. But I think the violin is really interesting for me. And if I had a chance in the future, I would love to master it. Okay, we'll stop there. Okay. So that would be about a band 7.5 to 8. Um, first of all, yeah. English is perfect, um, Juan, okay? So your English is a 9. In that sense, I mean uh, your vocabulary, your pronunciation, your grammar, it's a 9. What's pulling your mark to a 7.5 is simply content, okay? So a 7.5 mm -hmm. to an 8. So for a 9, you don't just need masterful uh, English grammar vocabulary but you also need masterful content and that's the key is to combine those two have amazing content with amazing vocabulary and grammar English uh, or sorry IELTS is not just an English test it's an English proficiency exam so it's testing communication as well as English okay um, mm -hmm. many native speakers when they sit the IELTS exam without practice they get a band 7 7.5 in the speaking and writing parts Okay, so that's an important point to remember. Um, all right, um, IELTS is also a high school equivalency test. Do you know what that means, Juan? Uh, not really. It means that if you don't pass grade 11, grade 12 English in high school, um, then you can do the IELTS to have the same requirement. So not all, um, not all uh, Canadians or Americans or British students pass their English in high school. And so if they want to go to university, they have a few options. One option is to take the IELTS, get a band 7.5 or higher, and then that will um, also substitute for their high school English. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's why. Yeah. So it's not. So it's not just. A lot of people think IELTS is just ESL, but no, that doesn't. The exam doesn't say it's a ESL test anywhere. So a lot of people get confused by that. Okay. Uh, first of all, a couple of really good points. So you had some really nice fluent um, language, like I say, good uh, vocabulary, good grammar. Uh, I also liked how you <laughs> paid attention. I think to my advice with. Uh, I think it was. Uh, Bogdan maybe um, somebody was or maybe Amra said um at the beginning of all of the answers you also have mm -hmm. natural fillers but you started switching them up so sometimes you said um and then here in the last one you switched it to hmm and that's good that's what you want so that's one way to do it so you say um well uh, I listen to music on the bus while I'm doing chores at home and of course at the gym when I'm doing exercise and then the next question if you could learn to play hmm if I had the chance it's good to do that mm -hmm. it's good to change up your natural fillers absolutely that's a good good strategy okay all right um so 
looking let's take a look at this last one if you could learn to play an instrument what would it be you said hmm if i had the chance to learn to play an instrument it would be the violin when i was younger i used to play the guitar and i was never any good at it that part of your response when you were younger you used to play the guitar and you were never any good at it it's it seems out of context this way. So it seems like you suddenly mm -hmm. started to go off topic. This is when some examiners actually interrupt you, right? If, if you talk too much. Now, it seems out of context, but it's not. I think there is a connection, but the problem is, is that you didn't make the connection, Juan. What's the mm -hmm. connection between the violin and the guitar? They both have chords. Yes. Or, uh yeah mm -hmm. they're both string instruments okay they're string. called string instruments right they're both string instruments and i got mm -hmm. that so as as your examiner you know i'm a thinking intelligent human i'd like to think anyway um and so i make that connection in my head that oh okay so juan has experience with string instruments but he didn't quite like the guitar wants to transfer to the violin you have to tell me that so the examiner mm -hmm. cannot be filling in blanks in your communication okay so in this case one your better answer would be if I had the chance to learn to play an instrument it would be the violin when I was younger I used to play the guitar but I was never any good at it however I did get a sense of how to play string instruments um, so I would like to learn the violin uh, because I think it has a nicer sound. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now it's connected, right? And now it makes sense why you mentioned the guitar and why you brought that into the picture. Do, do you get what I mean there? Yeah. For clarity of information. So you constantly want to, Juan, focus on clear, connected information with no holes, no gaps, and not over speaking. Okay. Right? Sounds good? Yeah. Okay. And now here's the and trick, Juan. Not just in English, but in Spanish too, right? So um, whatever language you're speaking, of course, you in Argentina, Spanish mostly, uh, whatever language you speak, you want to focus on the on that improvement in communication okay mm -hmm. okay let's try yes. this one 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 more time so if you could learn to play an instrument what would it be if i ever had the chance to learn to play any, any instrument it would be the violin when i was younger i used to play the guitar and i was never really good at it however if i did get a sense I did have the, the sense of how to play string instruments, so I would like to learn the violin because I think it has nicer sounds. Okay, much better, right? And see, it takes practice yeah. when you're filling those holes. That's when, oh, okay, I got to use a little bit of a different English or grammar here, and that'll also, of course, push the uh, score higher with complexity and accuracy. All right, um, Juan, keep it up. Nice to hear your voice uh, after uh, such a long time. So keep practicing, okay? Thank you. Thank you. And it was really nice to talk to you as well. Bye, Juan. Bye. All right. That was Juan. Nice to ha hear his voice. I'm sure some of you that know Juan uh, thought, hey, there's Juan. All right. Good. Okay. Um, students, uh, let's uh, let's do one more. I have, I'm going to do a quick refresh here on my page. Um, it looks like uh, we've really filled up the space in, uh, in here. So I'm going to refresh the page. Just send me... Um, send me a, a, a notification again. Okay, refresh your pages, send me a notification, and then uh, we will uh, connect here. All right, <clears throat> so uh, let's take uh, one of our newer premium students here uh, who's been waiting patiently. Let's see if Frost is available. Frost, are you ready? Let's see if we can get someone who we don't hear from too often they're relatively new here's frost hello hi frost hi adrian how are you 
I am doing great. How are you doing? Mm, I'm doing okay because I uh, work out, work late tonight. I see. So you're getting a bit tired in the day. Yeah. Or from the day, I should say. All right. Well, Frost, um, hats off to you. Even after uh, such a tiring day, you're still taking the time to practice more. That's what uh, that's what makes winners hard work for sure. Okay, uh, Frost, um, are you ready for a couple of questions? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Uh, so, has your choice in music changed in the last ten years? Mm, in the last decades, I my taste of music hasn't really changed much because uh, I really love electro swing and I keep listening to it. For the decades, and uh, from it's a, a small group of audience to now it's a really uh, good type of music for the public. If you could learn to play an instrument, what would it be? Uh, I would say it would be a piano because I really I found the piano sound is really relaxing and help me concentrate. And I used to play piano when I was young and to build characters, as my parents say. And uh, but I quit because uh, practicing piano took too much time, and I need to study. And now I want to pick it up and uh, try my skills again. All right, that is the end of part one. We'll stop there. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. So that would be a solid um, 6.5. You're fluent. You have fairly clear English. I can understand surely what you're saying. Uh, you get a little bit stuck sometimes. So a band seven is when you're fluent effortlessly. But here I felt like you need a little bit of effort here and there to keep your thoughts moving smoothly. So that's why it would be a six, 6.5. So uh, fluent to good English. Okay. Okay. You definitely want to pay a bit of attention to accurate uh, grammar and English as well. You're almost there. You're close, but you need to uh, fix some of these awkward grammatical mistakes. Do a lot of repetition, Frost. Okay, a lot of repetition of native English speakers, like from movies, from sitcoms. Do a lot of reading, reading aloud to fix the grammar as well. And record yourself. Listen, find those mistakes and correct them. Okay. So okay. Um, jumping back to uh, has your choice in music. You said in the last decades. I'm pretty sure I heard an S there. Um, 10 years is one decade. So in the last decade, duh, right? Decades is tens of years and that's a lot more. So in the last decade, my taste of music hasn't changed much. That was good. I liked how you used the present perfect, hasn't changed much because I really love electronic music because I still really love. So still is a good word to put in there because it's telling me that you loved it then and you love it now. So I still really love electronic music as I did back in 2010, okay? Okay. And then your answer got a little bit more awkward, a little bit more confusing, and you kind of started to go off topic and talk about how small groups of people and big groups of people like electronic music. I didn't, it was a bit weird. So uh, make sure that your um, second, third sentence has the same quality of English as your first sentence. Okay, that's really important. Okay. Okay. Now, one way to do that, Frost, do you know what it is? There's a trick. There's a, there's a way that you can make sure that you don't lose the quality with your second, third sentence. What's the trick? Mm. Example. Okay, I can tell you're thinking. It's an example. So um, instead of going off topic, give an example. Um, like uh, 10 years ago, I listened to a lot of Tiesto, and I still like listening to Tiesto. Okay, it's, um, it's less likely that you'll make a mistake if you're giving an example. Okay, example. Uh, 
Yeah, absolutely. So try this after me here, Frost, okay? In the last decade, my taste of music hasn't changed much because I still really love electronic music as I did back in 2010. Uh, like 10 years ago, I listened to a lot of Tiesto and I still like listening to Tiesto. Has your music changed in the last 10 years? Has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years? Well, in last decade, I my taste of music haven't, hasn't changed much. Uh, I re I still love electro swing music and uh, for example uh, in a in back in 2010 I love to listen elect uh, TS tone music and I keep listening until now. Okay, almost. Still some awkward English and they're not quite what I put up, but I like how you tried to do it from memory. So you're paying attention to the uh, English from memory, which is really good practice for us. So now what you want to do is you want to check how was that different, right? And then you check the differences, repeat the correct English, and you keep doing that over and over and over again. And I promise you that you will feel that you're making improvements, okay? Okay. All right, keep it up, Frost. We'll talk again uh, in the week, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, bye, Frost. Bye. All right, let's give a thumbs up to Frost and to all of our volunteers today. That was really, really great, all right? Really good work, everybody. I'm proud of you, I truly am. Um, and uh, that's how you do it. Students, we're using the student partner speaking on the website, that's that button there. Keep speaking with each other, keep practicing with each other. Uh, and again, make sure to join our premium IELTS package on the website. So you can do that by clicking this big red button that's just right above my head there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. <coughs> for general IELTS, it's the green background, okay? Uh, the reading and writing parts are different for general. Academic, it's the blue background. Chen, Carolina, Alexi, uh, it was awesome having the three of you moderate the class. That made the class go very smoothly, kept everybody focused on the tasks at hand. That was great. Uh, it's awesome that we have such good synergy and uh, control uh, to focus on IELTS. That will really elevate the quality of these classes. So students, keep practicing these questions. Remember all the tips. If you have questions for me, you can always send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, admin at ahelp.com. Again, the websites for your ultimate learning, uh, for a little investment, aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for uh, general IELTS. That's where you want to go. I will be back tomorrow, uh, I believe with reading tomorrow for everybody. So make sure to come back at the same time tomorrow. Join me for another live class, some more interactions. And until then, have an awesome uh, rest of your day if it's late in your country. Sweet dreams. Uh, keep pushing forward. Keep your chin up. You're all beautiful, amazing people. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria, Canada. Bye for now, everybody.